It looks like 2024 is shaping up to be an atrociously bad year for legacy auto, and part of it comes down to a simple plug. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All, and yes, I want to talk today about this plug, the Tesla plug or the North American Charging Standard plug. You can see here that it's relatively small and relatively elegant, and I'll try to get it in focus right there, but you have two main leads coming out, and then of course you have neutral and data ports and everything here. So this is a relatively small plug. I unfortunately do not have the CCS plug to show you next to it, but it is very big and very ungainly, and it is what one might call a dead man walking. So first of all, to be specific, today I am talking about the CCS standard that is in North America, not the one that is in Europe. That is a different CCS standard and that one is still going strong unfortunately because I think that Europe would be in better shape if they adopted the NACS standard as well. Maybe they could call it the EUCS, the European Union charging standard instead of NACS, I don't know. But no matter what you call it, Tesla's charging plug is significantly better in terms of the physical design of it and the engineering behind it than either of the CCS standards. And by the way, CCS stands for Combined Charging Standard, and you can see that in the two designs. They basically combine one plug for alternating current charging, which is what you would do at your house or on a low voltage charger, and then another plug for direct current or DC charging, which is what you do at a fast charger. Why they couldn't have put that into one plug design, I don't know, it's kind of ridiculous, but it's probably too late to make any changes in Europe because Europe jumped on one of the solutions too early in the process and sort of mandated that. As with USB-C versus other standards, Europe should have waited longer to decide on which standard to go with, and they would have ultimately picked Tesla's standard as well because the plug is just a better design. It does both AC and DC over one set of cables and allows for higher charging speeds than the CCS standards do. So it's just a better solution overall. But today I don't wanna to focus on the engineering aspects of things. I want to focus on the fact that Legacy Auto is going to have an incredibly difficult 2024 selling EVs into a market where the consumer is going to understand that they are buying an obsolete product. And what I mean by that is that every major auto manufacturer, excepting I believe Mazda and Stellantis, neither of whom produces a great number of electric vehicles at this point, but everybody else now is on the NACS bandwagon, which means they're going to be adopting the North American charging standard plug, and of course get access to Tesla's amazing supercharging network at the same time. But the problem is that all of these car manufacturers are only starting to produce NACS equipped vehicles. In other words, they'll have the correct plug for it in the car itself, either in quarter four of 2024, in other words, close to 12 months from now, or into 2025. And that means that if you're a consumer and you're not purchasing a Tesla in North America, which is Mexico, Canada, the United States, and I think some other Latin American countries. But anyway, if you're in those countries and you're purchasing a new EV today or any time in 2024 and you're not getting a Tesla, you're purchasing obsolete technology like right now as you purchase the vehicle. It would be as if a cable manufacturer came out with a lightning connector today for an iPhone when we all know that iPhone 15s and beyond are all going to be usb -C. That cable manufacturer is creating obsolete technology right now. And yeah, there will be some market to sell into at this point, and certainly more in iPhones than there are in vehicles because there are many orders of magnitude more iPhones out there with lightning connectors than there are EVs out there with CCS connectors. But overall, the analogy is that you would be building an outdated technology from the get-go. So manufacturing a new cable or new peripheral with a lightning connector today is a bad idea. You want to go towards the future. You want to make something that's got a USB connector, plus the fact you get access to Android that way as well. And even worse for cars with CCS connectors, cars last like 10 plus years. With phones, you're gonna get two to three to maybe five years of life out of the phone before it's pretty much defunct, but a car is a pretty durable object and it's expensive. So it's one of those things where you want to be very careful about how you invest your money because you're gonna hold onto this thing for a long time, and then you're eventually going to have to resell the vehicle as well, and you have to care about that resale value as well on the back end. 
So right now, today, and throughout 2024, if you are purchasing an obsolete technology and you know it's obsolete, and you're gonna have to hold on to it for three to five years and then try to resell it at the best possible value in three to five years when you purchase a new car and somebody buys your used car, why would you purchase obsolete technology as opposed to something that is the future, which has a North American charging standard on it, which today and throughout almost all of 2024 is only Tesla. And of course, as a side note, eventually these other vehicle manufacturers are going to get access to Tesla's supercharger network, but right now they don't. And that means that right now your other options for fast charging are pretty awful. You've got like Electrify America, PlugShare, and some other options in North America, but they are all really poor solutions compared to Tesla's superchargers. So again, why would you purchase obsolete technology that doesn't even function well today when you can purchase a car for the same price or even less and get access not only to the future of plugs and charging, but get a better experience out of the gate today. So I can hear some of you typing in the comments already that most of the companies like GM, Ford, etc., said sometime in 2024, they're going to produce an adapter that will allow people with their vehicles to plug into Tesla's supercharging network. And while that's true, it's going to be a very kludgy solution because you're going to have to have this adapter unit and you're going to have to plug the Tesla charger into it. And you're going to have to remember to take it with you everywhere. You're going to have to take it out all the time. The likelihood is that the vehicle won't be able to charge up particularly quickly because adapters always reduce the the amount of voltage you can put through. And you've got to remember that, you know, a 250 kilowatt fast charger, that's pumping a lot of electricity through. So any kind of adapter or anything that you're plugging into has the potential to reduce the power that you're putting out and potentially even be dangerous. And of course, with your vehicle, you're not just looking at having that for one year, you're looking at having that for the lifetime of that vehicle. If that vehicle's on the road for 12 years or something, that means that the person or people who own the vehicle are going to have to carry that stupid adapter around with them for 10 or 12 years. And while a lot of people might not have insight into the difference between CCS and the NAX charging standard right now, certainly by three or five years from now, everybody's going to know and nobody is going to want to purchase the old style vehicles with the old style plugs. And that means if you're a new car buyer right now and you purchase an EV for say $50,000 just to throw out a number, rather than the standard depreciation that you're going to get with most EVs and a Tesla and everything else, you're going to get a massive depreciation because nobody's going to want to buy this obsolete standard vehicle in three or five years when you want to sell it. Which means even if you purchase a vehicle that's got an identical price and has identical specs to a Tesla, and yeah, that doesn't exist right now, but hypothetically, if you had two of those things and one of them had CCS and the other one had NAX on it, the CCS version of that vehicle is going to depreciate significantly more than the NAX version of that by the time you want to sell the vehicle in three or five years. So that just for me is a non-starter. Why would anybody purchase any EV that's not a Tesla in 2024? And we can add on top of that ease of use in terms of things like routing. It's quite possible that routing might not work with a non-Tesla EV to get to super chargers because the software might need to be updated. And of course, Legacy Auto doesn't do software updates over the air. So it might be something where you would actually have to take it into the manufacturer just to get a software update to allow your vehicle to even see Tesla superchargers, assuming that you have access to those. And then of course, your battery might not preheat so that it charges as efficiently as possible like Tesla's do on their way to superchargers. You have questions of auto connection and billing and all sorts of things like that. If you don't know, when you get to a supercharger in a Tesla, you just open up the little charging panel, you plug the plug in and you walk away. The vehicle communicates with the network. It figures out who you are, who to bill, how to do the billing. All of that stuff happens in the background and you don't have to pay any attention to it. So it's literally plug in and forget it, right? And then it reminds you like five minutes before it's about to be charged up and you come back out and you pull out the plug and you drive off. So it's as simple as that. There's no apps to interact with, no credit cards to interact with, no confusion about any of that stuff. It just works. And will third-party vehicles from legacy auto like GM, Ford, et cetera, eventually have that capability? The likelihood is yes, because in 2025, when they install the NAX charging port, they're not just getting the physical port. Tesla is actually helping them with software development and things like that. So the likelihood is that the vehicles will actually communicate with Tesla superchargers in a very, very similar manner. And that will be really, really cool. But that's 2025. What is gonna to happen to these older CCS based vehicles? I doubt that they are going to have that seamless of integration with Tesla superchargers and with the NAX standard. And all of that of course leads to uncertainty. If you're a consumer looking to make the largest purchase that 
you will ever make outside of a house. And generally for most of all of us, a car is the second most expensive thing you buy behind a house. If you're looking to make that big of a purchase, you don't want uncertainty. You want to buy something that you have confidence in and you know that it's not gonna be obsolete in a year or two and that will be as easy to use as possible going forward. And CCS vehicles being sold in North America are uncertain. That's what you've got. If you buy a car like that right now, you're actually an uneducated consumer. You should not do that because you're buying something that's uncertain with only downside and no upside. So what does this mean? This means that educated consumers are not going to purchase any EV that's not a Tesla in North America. Now, not all consumers are educated. Some will be ignorant and they will go ahead and purchase this and then they're going to regret it very, very quickly that they purchased a vehicle that does not have a NAC standard plug in it, but there will be people who will do that. But educated consumers, and hopefully you will be able to educate people around you so that they don't make this mistake, educated consumers are not going to purchase a CCS-based vehicle. And that means that Legacy Auto and even companies like Rivian and Lucid, etc., are going to have a really hard time selling EVs in 2024 until they make that full-on switch and they have the NAX plug in their vehicles. And man, this really comes at a terrible time. All of these vehicle manufacturers, especially legacy vehicle manufacturers, needing to make the transition from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles, they need to be doing that right now, not sitting on their hands and waiting for another year. Because if they do, the consumer is going to be purchasing in the meantime, and they are going to purchase somebody else's vehicle. And in North America, that is going to be Tesla. So I actually predict that Tesla's market share could rise marginally this year, as opposed to continuing to fall as more and more other players come into the market. But if the consumer wakes up and becomes educated about this whole CCS versus NAX issue, people are simply not gonna buy other EVs. And so Tesla's market share should probably rise rather than contract next year. So what this means is by the time all of these auto manufacturers have made the transition from CCS to North American charging standard, a whole year's worth of buyers are going to have bypassed them and they are going to have purchased Teslas and they are going to be off the market for the next three to five years. And of course, that's even assuming that the consumer is going to look at legacy auto again in three to five years when they're looking to purchase another vehicle rather than just being satisfied with the brand they have, in other words, a Tesla, and continuing to purchase that brand instead. So, okay, you might say this looks really bad for automakers trying to sell into North America, but it doesn't really have to do with China or with the European Union because they're different markets and they have different charging standards. But what I say is you've got economies of scale and when you're trying to build out new technologies technology like electric vehicles, you need to produce a lot of them. And if you take away a significant percentage of all the EVs that you can sell, say 20% are sold in North America, that's 20% fewer EVs you're making. And that means that you actually don't get the same economies of scale that you would have gotten if you were selling into North America at those levels. And of course, for many legacy auto manufacturers, in particular GM and Ford, the United States, Canada, Mexico are the largest market for them. And so that if they're not selling into those markets, they're selling very, very few EVs. And all of that means that even while the CCS to NAX transition doesn't directly affect the EU or China, it's going to affect these companies' ability to be profitable and to make the rapid transition to EVs that they need to be doing yesterday rather than sitting on their hands for another year, retooling and getting ready to sell these vehicles in 2025. So what does this mean for everybody who's not Tesla and not a few of the Chinese brands like BYD? It means that their path through the 2020s and not going bankrupt is getting a lot more narrow and rocky and dangerous. This is really something that should be keeping the CEOs of every other company up at night. This is terrifying stuff and I honestly don't see a way out for them. But enough about what I think, what do you think? Definitely let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, please do like the video so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course, my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And of course, if you want to join any of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see outgoing shopping for a new Tesla, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.